Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll show you how I painted the Crow with Key Objective Marker from Cursed City. And here's the two pieces that come with the Cursed City game, and I'm going to be painting them to look like the terrain for Warcry, because I'll mostly be using them for my Warcry game, and much more than I'll use them in Cursed City. But here's the piece all ready to get started with and it's already been primed and I primed this by hand with a wraith bone paint but usually I'd use the citadel color wraith bone contrast undercoat and that's a great way to base your minis and then this is going to be perfect for the paints we'll use in this video which will mostly be the contrast paints and the brush I use most of the time is the army painter wargamer character brush but I've also been using the Kalinsky number two a lot lately and I can highly recommend it. So let's get straight into it with some Contrast Militarum Green and really important to give all your paints a good shake before you use them and then I'm going to be applying this all over the masonry part of the model and I'm being quite generous here. I'm really going to use this dark green Militarum paint to get into those recesses and give us some nice shadows and this is a really great colour and this is exactly the same paint and technique I used on the Warcry terrain on all the ruined buildings so I'm copying that here so that it all fits in together. And then once we've done that and that's dried, we'll take the base wraith bone paint and I'm just going to touch up any areas that I make a mistake on. And this is a really important stage of the contrast paint method that I use, making sure it's all neat and tidy. So when we apply our, our next color over any of the areas, make sure that they're um, completely neat and tidy and full on wraith bone so we get the best effect we can. And now... We, once that's dried, we're going to take the contrast snake bite leather and give this a nice coat all over these kind of creeping vines that are coming out of the ground. And I'm not putting as much paint on my brush here as I did with the green. So I'm going easy now and just giving it a nice coating though. And this is going to be like a nice base for us to give us a little bit of shadow in those twists and underneath. And uh, kind of this is a great color for leather, but it also works well with this like natural kind of roots because it also gives us a nice highlight on the more like flat Matter exposed areas so give that a nice even coat all over but not too much paint because we don't want it to run into the green we've already done next I took some Nasdreg yellow and plague bearer flesh and I opened these both at the same time and I start off with the yellow and I'm going to give these little bits of grass here a nice generous coat of this and again not too heavy we don't want it to spread everywhere but enough that it fills in those recesses for a nice shadow and so we we'll do that on both sides and then we'll take that plague bearer green color and we'll put it on while it's still wet we'll always do a little wet blend just to give it a dry kind of dirty look to it so it's not really bright like straw but it's not like grass either almost like dead grass so we want that to fit in with this kind of stark environment while that dries, I moved on to the Lead Belcher base paint, and this is going to be for the key. And this key is going to be gold, but the little loop or hook um, hoop that it's on is going to be silver. So I'm giving it all the same coat of the Lead Belcher, though, because we'll be going over it with a contrast paint to get our gold effect later on. So a nice even coat. We only need one coat of this all over. And then we're going to take some Contrast Black Templar, and this is going to be for our crow. And I'm simply going to give this one nice generous coat all over the crow and this is going to go in those shadows really nicely you can see with the contrast paint it really wants to go into those little recesses and it sucks in that paint so we could be quite generous for things like this with all these overlapping feathers and we can then kind of use the texture of the model to get the paint off the brush and where it want to go i try and start and end my brush strokes where i want most of the paint to pull uh, to build up and then i like push and pull it around to get it into place Next, I took some contrast Nasdreg yellow again, and I'm using this for the gold key, but I'm avoiding that hoop that I want to keep silver. And this is a great technique, putting these contrast paints over a metallic base. Gives a really nice effect, and this is going to give us a nice gold color. And using that lead belcher really speeds things up. And then we're going to take some Rakarth Flesh. And at this stage, everything's really dry. So we're going to do some dry brushing over that masonry now. And so I put a little bit on the end of this makeup brush, which is super soft bristles. And then I work it into the bristles on a paper towel, trying to remove as much paint as I can and just test it on my hand. And then I'm going to do mostly downwards or side to side strokes 
getting a little bit of a dry brush effect over all the masonry and I don't mind if any goes on those roots because we're going to do something else with those later on but I definitely don't want any on the crow and you can see that's kind of made a massive difference that's given us some real nice texture bringing out the texture of the model giving us a little bit more of a highlight and again this is exactly what I did with the war cry terrain so it's going to fit in perfectly with that when we play our war cry games with all these great objectives and there you can see there's the difference before and after that highlight. And then I'm going to move on to a shabty bone, another layer paint, and I'm going to do another highlight, exactly the same method. I didn't bother cleaning my brush here because most of the paint had come off. And then I'm going to work that all over. And this is more of a warmer, uh, almost a creamier colour. So this is going to give us a brighter highlight and um, just bring it to life a little bit more. Again, don't worry about the vines, that's okay. But try and get a little bit more of this on the uppermost part of the model just to where the extra kind of light's going to hit it and again this is a before of after for this second stage of dry brushing next we're taking some agrax earth shade and that dry brushing pretty much dries straight away so i'm going to go over those roots now with the agrax earth shade and using those two layers of dry brush has kind of given us a little fade going on with these um, like creeping vines so I thought that was quite cool but I want to tone it down again and not having it look exactly the same as the masonry so this brownie Agrax earth shade does the trick then I'm going to take some layer Stormhost silver and just give a little highlight to this key just to bring it out a little bit and we can use silver over gold as a highlight it works really well and we also use this same Stormhost silver on the silver part on that hoop that's straight over the lead belcher that's really going to bring this key to life and make it pop a little bit more and this crow is certainly going to be attracted to sparkly things so doing this silver over this nice deep gold i think works really nicely and i did that with both of the models then i'm going to take some sky gray 0.989 by vallejo and i've got a different brush here an old scruffy brush but i'm doing the same dry brush technique and i want to be really light here just lightly gently go over those feathers bring out the texture of the sculpt and let the model do the work for us. So nice, quick and easy technique this to bring that crow to life a little bit more. And let's have a little side by side with the other one a before and after so you can see how that works. Then we're going to take some blood for the blood god, a technical paint. And very carefully, you're going to take a little dot of paint and just pop it in there for the eye. And you can't really see on the camera all that well, but it does give a nice red effect. One thing you could do is put a little dot of white on first and then the red over it. That might make it stand out a little bit more. But for me, tabletop ready, I was happy with this. Now it's time to do the base. And I should really have done the base first, but I've got some skulls, some little bits of gravel and some coarse flocking. And I'm going to use some Gorilla Super Glue to fix these to the base. So yeah, definitely worth doing this before you paint the model. And I've done it on the other objective markers before I did the painting. But um, here I thought I would do it uh, at the end and just see what happened. But now I'm just gluing it on with this Gorilla Super Glue. Great stuff because it's not too runny. It's almost like a little gel and it really sticks things quickly. And so I've put the skull right up against the model and then just kind of spacing out these little gravelly rocks here and there till they look nice. And then I'm taking some of the coarse flocking and just sprinkling it over. And that's going to stick to any of the glue that's still exposed. Cover that up and then that's going to set really quickly. Within 30 seconds, this is solid. But leave it a couple of minutes before we start painting over it. And to paint over it, I'm just going to take that Wraithbone base paint again and give it a nice thick coat all over you may need to do this twice if you add a little bit of water to it to wet it down so it goes in the gaps but um sometimes you can get away with one coat but here i did um one coat and then just touched up the gaps again with another coat at the end i'm just using a scruffy brush here just in case there is any glue exposed and then i did the same process as i did before took that militarum green and then once that wraith bone has dried I just went over all the rocks as if they were like fallen bits of masonry from the ruins and gave that a nice coat of the Militarum green. Then for the skull, I got some Contrast Skeleton Horde and gave it a nice thick coat all over that skull. I really pushed a blob of it into those eye sockets. It can really take a lot of paint with this colour because it dries quite pale, but you want to get a lot of it in the recesses to give you a nice shadow. And then I just took the Rakarth flesh and a Shabdi bone once those are dried and gave a dry brush over the rocks mostly and tried to avoid the skull. And then finally, it was some Sterling Mud. And I got this tool, this texture tool, in the Mortal Realm subscription. I've done a video on that if you want to check it out. And that also came with some Sterling Mud, this real fine mud effect. So I thought I'd try it out. And so I took a, a blob of it out of the tub and then used the small end of that tool 
just to push it around. I found this tool really handy actually, so I was glad that this came in one of the issues. And then just pushing that around, getting that earth in. I want this to look really muddy, and I'm going to use this theme throughout. And then our last stage is to take some military green, 0.975 from Vallejo, a little bit of blue tack on a brush, and then that'll hold our model on there. And then we can use it as a little turntable. And then I just take some of that paint then and give the rim a real nice thick coat. And I find one coat of this Vallejo paint does the job. And you've got to paint the rim. This is a great way to finish the model. And I've gone for a dark green so it fits in with the board. And there's our finished crow with key objective marker. I was really happy how it turned out. Nice, quick, tabletop ready standard as with all the things I paint. And so this is now getting us closer and closer to start in the rule series of Curse City as I start to work through all the different objectives and the heroes and villains. And here you can see the two side by side. And um, these crows are great. I love crows. So it's great to see some crows in there uh, with these keys. I really like that. And I think these are going to make for some awesome objectives. But I'm also going to use them in a warband. You'll find out later on this week when I publish a video on that. And you can see with the base, I went for that dark green because I wanted it to look like the Warcry board. And so I think this colour works really well to help fit that in. And then I've gone for that muddy theme as well because I want to kind of incorporate that into the kind of all the terrain pieces. I'll put links to everything we use in the video in the description below and those will be affiliate links to Element Games but they don't cost you anything extra. In fact, you can save up to 20% there on all your games products and for every sale made through those links, I get a small commission that helps me do videos like this and I really appreciate that support. If you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel, then please check out my Patreon page. And thanks to everyone who's joined so far. It's really awesome. We hang out on Discord, talk about the hobby, share ideas and help each other out. And you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else. So I'll put a link in the description. It'll be great to see you there. I hope you enjoyed the video and this gave you an idea of how to get some quick tabletop ready objective markers up and ready and painted. And I'll be doing videos for each of the different objective markers, the heroes and the villains from the set. So look out for all those on the channel. But thanks so much for watching. Please like if you like it. Subscribe for more videos like this. And don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games.